Now I'm talking to Aspa Lecker from uh, Food Panda. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Aspa, to uh, talk with me now, um, right before your uh, speech at four o'clock. Um, yeah, tell me a little bit of uh, about Food Panda uh, and what is your role there. Uh, I joined Food Panda quite recently, actually, so I'm there almost one and a half months ago. Oh. And I used to be to another startup before. My role right now, and also coming from before, uh, I'm leading the analytics department, and all the analytics topic com uh, combined with a uh, cohort analysis and really CLV projection and optimizing the budgets to the best extent. Um, I come from uh, my previous company used also to be a startup, which unfortunately didn't make it. And we, however, we started there really looking into every single number and doing, uh, trying to really put it into practice and optimize the budget, optimize the marketing strategy and everything. Food Panda is now a, another kind of startup. It's already two years old. We are in more than 45 countries. We have a, a quite a big investment behind and we really need to be wise in order to, to grow the brand awareness, really spend our budget as efficient as possible and, and grow as much as possible actually. It's in a very different stage and there is really where you need to pay attention to your budget and what do your customer wants and how you can better use this information. Um, yeah, Footpanda belongs to Rocket Internet. Yes, right? it does. Um, yeah, Rocket Internet is, is uh, known as a very data-driven company. Um, what does that affect to work? Uh, and, and what are you doing better than other companies? Mm. I, I studied also mathematics. I am not a very... I, I am business uh, business center, but I also a very number-centered mm. person. And what I loved at, uh, at Rocket Internet is that they really keep have the, the, the daily reports for the staff and the works they do. And they really look into them and try to find out what works good, what doesn't work good, where we need to optimize, uh, how will affect if we optimize this, uh, this department or this procedure to our companies, how will uh, this affect our customers and the visitors in the website. So I, was, uh, I really like this approach and I, I feel that with, in the online world you have the possibility to use tons of data and really give to the customer what he wants and to the co to the business also what he wants. And we, we really do this at, uh, at Rocket. And the good point also is that they do have a lot of data to use. So maybe at a smaller company that's not so easy, but Rocket companies usually have a millions of data, a lot of customers. They invest a lot, they collect a big amount of data, then they, they have the, the knowledge and the tools to analyze them and use them to, to make really good business at the end. Uh, you're going to talk about conversion attribution modeling today. Mm -hmm. um, do you have some quick tips for, for companies? Uh, how do they have to start in introducing con a conversion attribution? Mm, I would say that uh, as long as you use attribution mod, that you need to start somehow using attribution model, no matter how, and that always uh, should be applied to any other kind of analysis a company does. You, you just need to start doing something and then keep optimizing it in the, in the meantime. So companies could just start using the, the Google tool and do a 40-20-40, a position-based or a time decay education, something that just takes them away for the first click at the beginning. And then it's really up to the company, as I will say, I'll give some tips and some tools to do so. And also depends on the, the employees and the team you have and what is their strengths to, to build an attribution model data-driven of, of your company's data and really be applied directly to what you want to analyze and what you want to have. Mm -hmm. uh, would you, in your opinion, um, should every company use conversion attribution modeling? I think it's, it's something, I was not so big fan at the beginning mm -hmm. when I was first introduced to that and I couldn't realize why, but however, when I really got into the business and I saw what actually is happening. I really got into the raw data because they told me you have to make it no matter if you agree or not. <laughs> there is no discussion. Mm -hmm. So I really got into the data and I saw that indeed attribution model is actually happening because no, it's only a few visitors that directly come to the website and the purchase straight away. So people come, they come again, they come back and so on and so on. And I do the same if I want to buy a pair of shoes online. Mm -hmm. So. If you don't use attribution at the end, you are not taking into consideration anything that brought your customer into the website at the first point. So if you just keep investing on the channels that just put the, uh, the customer at, 
the final stage of decision, then you will end up having the same 10 customers forever. You will never get any more customers. You'll never really, really grow. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would say that it's very important to take attribution modeling into consideration. Really take the whole journey, understand why this customer is, how he comes from. You, you can even, if you use it and you have like a really good uh, algorithm behind, know from the first time he comes to the website, after how many days, how many days he's going to purchase and how much value he's going to generate. So you really know, would I like to retarget this person? Because even if he comes back and purchases eventually, I'm never going to earn enough money from him. So I think it's a very powerful tool. And even if you don't use it to the, to the greatest extent, you're going to get a, a, some good insights from it. Do you have a constant model uh, which are you using in, uh, in, at Foodpanda or are you going to, to think about your modeling uh, constantly? Um, I, I, as I joined quite recently, we are still uh, using the very, uh, the very specific model. So we use a based uh, position-based model for our new customers and then a time decay model, for, mm -hmm. for example, for the returning customers. However, we are right now setting up the, the data-driven model and we will try to go through the data, see actually how did the customers um, uh, came back to the website, through which channels, and then really create an attribution based on our data history. Mm, okay. Um, you're a very heavy Google Analytics user. Um, are you using the Google Analytics interface, or are you, using, or are you looking at the data via Excel mm. sheets or something? I, 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 I am considered to be an expert in Google Analytics within the company and then yeah. people come to me and ask me, oh, where can I find this? And I'm like, I've never seen it before. <laughs> because uh, I usually have to, to deal with the raw data. I very much like it because you can do whatever you like with them. You can group them as you want. Probably it's already read in Google Analytics interface, but it's, I don't know, I, I, I got used to this way. So I love both the Google Analytics interface for more for users that they just want to see the very basic stuff. And there are many companies that they shouldn't care about so advanced attribution models. So I've also talked to a lot of companies and I told them you don't really need to go so much in depth. Just take something very simple, adjust it, and it's already enough for your business. But when it comes to a, such a data-driven and, and with such amount of data company, then I would say that interface is like for the very high level people. Uh, people who only want to see a big overview, then you have so many and much more opportunities to go and directly work with the raw data of Google Analytics, either through BigQuery or through other interfaces you can bring them or Google API or anything and do much greater stuff and really your way. Mm -hmm. Which other tools are you using besides uh, I've I've used, uh, we're using of course the API to, to bring the data to a data warehouse. I've used a lot the R statistical program to connect and make some graphs, making some, you can make interactive graphs, bring the data, analyze the data directly there. And also uh, you can use a Google sheet and Google document and from there also export some data through both the analytics API and the MC MCF API and predictive API as well. So. There are quite a few tools you can use and bring your data out from Google and then do all the transformation. Mm -hmm. um, let's uh, talk about the Food Panda user. What is the typical Food Panda user and how does his customer journey look like? Mm, we are very much a food driven company, so our attribution is not as big as it used to be for my previous company or from other e-commerce businesses, because you can imagine if you want to just order a pizza, you're not going to discuss it a lot. You just <laughs> find something that looks tasty and you order that. Maybe if you want to buy a pair of shoes, you're going to go into some price comparison websites, then come back to, to, the, to our shop and, and so on and so on. So the journey takes longer. For us, the user typically converts within one, two, three or four days and he, it can be many ways. We, we put a lot of emphasis in not paid ad, uh, channels and we want really to optimize them with some boost of TV or something like this. But uh, that's our main focus at the moment. Mm. And we are quite lucky, like attribution, the attribution window is not very big for the, for the customers. They are quite... Um, 
quite fast to, to go to bed, but our challenge is how to bring them back, actually. So we need to use the attribution to find out more about the returning visitors. So of course you order online, but we need to find some ways of how better to remind you to come and order the pizza from us again. Mm -hmm. How do you handle a, um, a user uh, which is using cross device? Uh, right now, we have uh, we try to to link them with some user ID and the cookie, and then we identify these cookies from from some users. So it's it's kind is it of important for you. It is important because we have uh, we have the web uh, interface that generates orders. We have also the mobile side, and we have also our apps. So. For us as a company, we really our target is to move all the users to become app users because that's the easiest way they come back. Some they have already pre-installed the app. They kind of they never forget to order online when they have the app. So we need to identify if any how these users are actually becoming app users, how they move to the other device, how they behave in each device, and what is the better way for us how we should move actually. Which advertisement may be better to put on the app or the mobile instead of the of the web device? So we do really uh, we track them and I mean cross device is very broad topic and there is nothing correct at the moment. Also I haven't uh, haven't focused very in depth for this, but for now we just we check only for the existing customers that we have a profile into a database. Mm -hmm then we know through all the cookies that came from, we can select information on the devices, the places, everything. And for these users, we make some, some conclusions. Of course, it needs to be more focused later on. Aspa, let us look into the future for a moment. Um, which trend, uh, trends are you identifying at the moment and how, does they, uh, how will they affect your work at Foodbank? I, I think, as I mentioned before, a most uh, a highest trend, and we also need to focus a lot, is transforming our customers to app users. So we have an app that has a very high retention rate. That people come always, they order, they get, uh, and they continuously come back without any reminders. So without us having to spend a lot of money, people come back. We we also put a lot of effort in TV advertisement to, to grow our brand name and make people very aware that Food Panda is really connected to the mobile phone and to your app and you always, every time you feel hungry, just go to your mobile and order. So that is right now our key driver and we are also in many markets, not, not so much in Europe, we are also a lot in, uh, in Africa, in Asia, in America. And for us right now, we consider it's quite okay, but you can imagine that the challenges there are much higher. So uh, internet might not work so well, or not all people have smartphones to download the apps. So we have to work more than with the mobile rather than the app and so on. So that there are quite a few challenges we need to face and always depends on the country, but we want really to become a very, a company that you always connect with food and with your mobile phone. So. Just the easiest thing to do when you are hungry, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Aspa, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best for your speech. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye.